Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at another knife by Real Steel and Ostep Held Design. This is the G5 Metamorph Compact Micarta. They also sell it with gray aluminum, or you can get gray G10, or you can get, if you're in Europe, a nice bright blue G10 version. I'll have links for all of those down below. Although the only one that I would earn any commission on is one of the Amazon links. But still, I really, really like this. I got this from Indiana Knives. It was an exclusive with them. And uh, I am very much loving this knife. I have to apologize to the guys at uh, Indiana Knives. They sent me this knife for free. And I thought I had done the review, but I hadn't. Uh, I got this... Uh, was it early October, late September last year? And I thought I had finished the video. And I realized when I did my recording for my video of my permanent knife collection that this knife wasn't there. And I looked and yes, it was still in my drawer of yet to review knives. I've got a separate drawer where I keep those. Uh, so there you go. There's some really good things about this knife. There's some cons about this knife. So keep watching. To begin with, yeah, these knives are sold out. I don't know of any store that sells any of the M390 with Micarta. I don't know if Real Steel will do that again or not, but uh, those of you who have this knife, great. If you want to get the other versions, they're going to be the same in terms of, you know, how they look, how they feel, the size, the weight might be slightly different because of the handle materials, but but very much the same. I keep on opening it and hitting the tip onto the uh, tabletop here. Thankfully, it's nice foam. First off, the size comparison with the Ontario Rat. You know, I, wow, see, it is a small knife indeed. I can't even fit the rat on the screen. So if we just look at the blade length, you're not actually losing all that much in c compared to the Ontario Rat 1, but you're certainly, you know, getting a much smaller handle in every possible way. So it is a small knife, not very heavy either. But I can tell you that Indiana Knives will have an exclusive with Micarta from Real Steel in the near future, in the next couple months or so. So check back there often. It's going to be the Megalodon with a, it's a frame lock, titanium one side and Micarta the other side and this same beautiful M390 for a blade. So if you like the style of the Megalodon, you know, keep watching uh, their store and uh, maybe you can grab one before they sell out because they'll probably sell out pretty quick. This is the uh, brown micarta version of the knife. Mine has got... Uh, well, micarta always looks slightly different from one to the other. This side has got the... Uh, fabric that they used in here close to the surface and then the brown resin is in there so it's got a quite a light look on this side this side's got a few spots that are a little bit darker and that's kind of nice it's got a lot of texture for good grip the uh, blade is the classic metamorph blade except for this time you've got m390 and it's numbered this one is number 262 it says Ostep Held Design there, and that's where the uh, numbering and the steel is. And then this side's just nice and clean. I really like no writing on that side of the knife. And the badging on this side is quite small. The only place that it says anything about real steel knives is right there on the pocket clip. It has their square RSK logo. Very nice. I like the deep pocket clip. We've got a lanyard post right there, a micarta backspacer. We've got jimping for the front flipper right there. Works very well. The detent on this guy is pretty much perfect. So you can reach over with your thumb or reach over with your index finger, deploy that blade. Lockup on this thing is perfect now. That's one of the cons with this, and maybe I should get into that first. This Micarta run from Real Steel Knives for Indiana Knives, it's the only place that has this run of knives. It's exclusive. Real Steel messed up. 
that's the long and the short of it. This knife had problems when it got to me. Two main problems. The great thing was both of those problems are not hard to fix. At least they weren't hard to fix by me. One of the one of the problems was really easy to fix, and the other problem was a little bit more challenging to fix, but not all that hard actually. The first problem has to do with the backspacer here. It's uh, a micarta backspacer. There's a little bit of an indentation there. Uh, here's a drawing of what it looks like in this orientation if you're looking down the micarta. So this is the micarta handle scale on each side and this is the backspacer. There's a little bit of a cutout. Maybe it's not exactly a U, but so on the back of it you've got a little bit of a trench going right down it. Well the issue is that here's the middle of it. There's the pin to screw it in. On this side the micarta was proud so it was standing up. Here's a picture of it. So where it was sticking proud I just took a very sharp, well not this knife, an X-Acto knife, and I scored a little line along there on either side. And then I took it apart and I just sanded it down until it's pretty much flush. And then now, you know, it's nice and flush across the back. And yeah, it doesn't have the little bit of a trench in there, but I could, I could do that too if I wanted to. I could take a little file I've got small files, a little round file, and file it in there if I wanted to, but no, don't need to. That kind of mis error is common on these, and so there you go. The other problem was lockup was so early that, you know, I was constantly, you know, the, the, the lock was letting go. So Early lockup is the easiest of the lockup issues to fix. And I've got a video on how to fix early lockup. And so I did it so that now the lockup is perfect. The lock is fully engaged and it's got loads of where to go across. How much does this knife cost? Well, in its perfect condition, brand new, it was 145 US dollars. They also have the same knife with aluminum handle scales in gray and VG10 steel for pretty much the same price, $59 and change. Let's finish talking about all the different price options before we go on to something else. This knife is also uh, like Lamnia in the U in Europe has this in blue G10 for 50.86 euros, uh, VG10 steel. Or in the UK, they're selling it for 36.33 pounds. Knives and Tools has the uh, aluminum version in gray for 69.5 euros. Uh, they don't sell that knife in the UK. So that's for my European and uh, across the pond friends. Blades Canada has got the G10 version, gray G10, VG10 steel for $79.99 Canadian. So that's all for the pricing. One of the other things I really like is the jimping on the side of the lock release. I like that quite a lot. Good action, easy to get your thumb in there and uh, get that uh, traction. So that's really good. I don't remember now if I talked about the balance point yet, so I'll just do that really quick right here. It's way back here. I do prefer if the balance point is closer to the pivot, but that's not bad. Not bad at all. They could have skeletonized it a little bit because the liners don't have any skeletonizing. That would have made it a little bit lighter and brought the balance point closer. And I think people really like uh, having some really light knives sometimes, and this knife even lighter. I guess would be a little more attractive to uh, than what it is, but it's quite good the way it is. I think everything else was covered, so now it's time to go over all the sizes, dimensions, all that stuff, and then we'll take the knife apart. So what do we got here? I'm talking about the weight, 55 grams. That's 1.9 ounces. So who knows? Maybe they could have got it to 1.75 ounces or something, but not bad. The sharpness from the factory was 145 bess which is very good. The uh, cutting edge length, 76.1 millimeters, 2.996 inches. The blade length, 
78.1 millimeters, which is 3.075 inches. Yeah, it's a little over three inches in the blade length. That doesn't make sense to me. That's, I call that a miss. They should have made it, if they're that close to three inches, they should have made it just under three inches so that uh, people in those jurisdictions don't risk getting in trouble. You could take the tip down a little bit more, but you know, then you lose some of the look of the knife, right? Or you could grind it up a little bit on the cutting edge and still have a point, but you know, then you make more of a belly. So yeah, it's unfortunate. The blade thickness over here at the Ricasso, 3.05 millimeters, 0.12 inches. The blade depth, it's biggest right here at the heel of the blade, 17.3 millimeters, that's 0.681 inches. The thickness behind the grind, 0.52 millimeters, 20.5 thousandths of an inch, so that's very good. I wouldn't mind it a little bit thinner, but 20 thousandths is usually what my target is for EDC knives. The um, This isn't really an EDC knife though, is it? This is more of a gentleman's kind of knife. The uh, grind angle, 19.1 degrees, 22.4 degrees. So for this kind of purpose with this knife, I'd make it 18 degrees per side, maybe even a little bit less. Now for the handle, the handle length, not counting the flipper tab sticking out, just the uh, micarta here, 102.1 millimeters, that's 4.02 inches. The uh, grip area, it's a little bit over nine centimeters, a little bit over three and a half inches, but not enough to go up in those dimensions. The handle thickness, measured on the on the Ricarda, on the micarta, not on the screws, or the pocket clip, 11.1 .1 millimeters, that's 0.437 of an inch, so nice and thin. The handle depth, so the widest area this way, 19.7 millimeters, 0.776 inches, and the depth when the knife is closed is still there, 21.9 millimeters, 0.862 inches. And then the total length of the knife from the tip to the very end, 180.2 millimeters, that's 7.094 inches. So, 7 inches. 3 inches, 4 inches, 7 inches. That's pretty good. I really like the dimensions, the overall proportions, the weight, the look, the feel of this knife. I like it quite a lot. I believe I already talked about the price. Uh, the... G10 and the um, aluminum versions are just under 60 US dollars and I've got links down below for several other places where you can buy this knife. So now let's take the thing apart. So here you can see it taken apart. The uh, backspacer here I took it all the way out and you know just took a little bit off. Very, very easily done. The uh, liner lock, I did put a little bit extra tension there. I bent this just a little bit so it's coming out. Usually they don't stick out that far. I like a stronger detent and that's what I have to do to get the perfect detent on this one so that it flips open really, really well. There's our ceramic ball bearings. Beautiful. Uh, captured stop pin is not um, it's not soldered or welded into the steel. It's a floating stop pin, but it works perfectly. There's no thread locker on any of the screws, so they were not hard to take apart. Didn't even come close to damaging any of the screws. I forgot to show, you, you take the backspacer off and there's the screws for the pocket clip. They come in through the back. That's why there is absolutely nothing in the way of that pocket clip getting seated all the way down. Get it down over that pin. Beautiful. Very nice indeed. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, while I had the knife apart, I decided to uh, sharpen it. And I haven't strapped it yet, but it's got a beautiful edge on it now. It was easier to sharpen taking apart uh, because it was easier to clamp up. Here's a picture. So with the uh, clamp that way, it holds it. If I just clamped it here, 
I would just barely get a little bit of a flat section on that ricasso there to be able to clamp on in order to get a secure grip. So it was easier while it was apart. And uh, I decided I'd wash the handle scales too while they were apart. I had a little bit of grease on my fingers when I was doing all the work on everything, when I was making it work properly and stuff. So now it's uh, nice and clean. And I'm sure it's not going to be quite as light before too long because the skin's from my the skin's from my oil. The oil from my skin is going to uh, you know darken it up. You know, I can just rub it a little bit with my hand right now, and you can see it's already getting just a little bit darker. Beautiful knife. If I wasn't clear before, Indiana Knives only ships to Americans, American addresses. That is. The uh, store is like, it's one of those mom and pop stores, you know, so it's just one guy doing most of the work. He's probably got some people working with him. So it's good to support small business. I like supporting the smaller knife shops out there. I don't know. I think you get better service and uh, I don't know. It just feels good to support a uh, some a specific person's livelihood instead of just sending money to some big well not big business knife stores usually aren't big business but uh, you know a bigger store. So I really really like this knife. There are compact versions out there. I don't know if Real Steel is going to do another Micarta version out there or another M390 version out there, but VG10 is a pretty good steel. And Got your choice between G10 or aluminum, and uh, yeah, that makes for a pretty good knife. As long as you're not stuck in a place where you have rules about three inches. Sorry about that, guys. But hey, why am I saying sorry? It's the Canadian sorry. I'm not really apologizing. I'm just I'm trying to say that I feel with you. So thank you so much for watching my review video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's just about time at the end of the month again. If it, you may have noticed on my channel, I have the uh, memberships turned on on YouTube memberships. If you don't like Patreon for whatever reason, you want to become a YouTube member, you know, down below the video by the description, there's the word join. You can join. It'll have the exact same benefits as if you were a Patreon supporter, meaning Every single month, one of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, will win their choice of one of the knives that I reviewed in the previous month. I sometimes hold back specific knives that are going to go into my permanent collection, but other than that, they can pick just about anything that I review. So, thanks again for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.